From 2007 to 2012, iOS didn't change a whole lot. Hardware made big leaps with the iPhone 4, but overall when you compared the first iPhone to the last iPhone of the time, they didn't really look that different. This all changed after the passing of Steve Jobs and the era of Tim Cook began in 2013 with the iPhone 5S running a completely new UI designed by Johnny Ive and his team in the form of iOS 7. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh for 91 Tech, and today we're going to be taking a look at the version of software that changed everything and is quite infamous with within the Apple community. iOS 7 is so different from anything Apple had really done before, and set the trend and design path that mostly has been followed with iOS 11 and we can assume iOS 12. In this video we're going to be talking about some history and what it's like to actually use iOS 7 in 2018. I did a similar video about iOS 6 if you're interested, so link in the description down below for that. iOS 7 is fascinating to me, and hopefully it is to you too, so without further ado, let's just get right into this. iOS 7 ran on a multitude of devices, from the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 5S. Now, the iPhone 5S was, of course, the newest and best phone at the time to run iOS 7, and it flew on the old software. Big shout out to YouTuber Revac Tech, who provided me with a lot of the footage that you see here today, all the 5S footage and stuff, that's his 5S, and a couple other phones there too. Thanks to him, and make sure you go check out his channel, link in the description, as he does a ton of cool old Apple stuff like this. Anyway, the iPhone 5S felt great on iOS 7, and a big feature it brought was Touch ID, something that hadn't really been seen much before. It is of course now a staple in smartphones, except for the iPhone 10, I suppose. Passcodes were always annoying, and being able to just put your finger on the home button was, and still is, awesome. But I'm really getting ahead of myself here, as this video is about iOS 7 and the experience it brings. From a purely cosmetic standpoint, it has aged much better than its predecessor, iOS 6, with a much more modern looking design and feel. It's really not that much different than iOS 11. Right when you turn on the phone, in this case I have this iPhone 4S, you're greeted with the classic slide to unlock, a feature that only just recently was replaced in iOS 10. Sliding it, we can get right into the interface, which again doesn't look that much different than my iPhone 10. Sure, some of the icons have changed, music, app store, and so on, but it is nowhere near the difference when looking at iOS 6. The lack of change in iOS since 2013 could be considered both a good and bad thing, but a big takeaway from this is how well designed iOS 7 really was, to the point that you could skip ahead 5 years and still fit right in. Supposedly Apple might have a redesign for iOS 13, but at the moment that isn't confirmed and there isn't really much change on the horizon. While iOS 7 was criticized for looking a lot like Android and being flat and soulless, those are my words by the way, I'm pretty sure I've called it that before, it's still hard not to respect what it represents a modern experience and a shift from what Apple used to be. Steve Jobs never would have done this. He really had no part whatsoever on iOS 7's design, and his last phone he really worked on was the iPhone 5. Apple completely rebranded themselves with this release, and while we might be looking back at the old design with nostalgia and rose-tinted glasses, it's very fair to say Apple made the right choice. The design of iOS 6 just doesn't fit in in a modern setting. iOS 7 wasn't all great at release, however. It brought an onslaught of problems, really seen with prior iOS versions, and unfortunately this is a pattern that has been repeated several times since. The original release for iOS 7 was buggy. Now this by itself isn't a huge deal, because hey, it's the first release. However, there was much more than this. The iPhone 4 was the oldest device to run iOS 7, and it was horrifically slow at launch. For many, it caused them to have to either buy a new iPhone or leave Apple altogether. Everything was slow. Considering Apple claimed iOS 7 was built on simplicity and adding to the experience you already know without taking away from it, this seems like a major oversight, and it was. The iPhone 4 does not run iOS 7 well whatsoever. That said, it got better. With the release of iOS 7.1, it got faster and Apple managed to really improve on the software as a whole. Unfortunately, the damage was already done, and iOS 7 has one of the worst reputations for this reason. Practically speaking, iOS 7 on the iPhone 4 as of now is not that bad. This is because of a couple reasons. First First of all, as I just said, Apple did speed it up significantly, which is great. And the other is that it was kind of overshadowed by the failure of its younger brother, the iPhone 4S. 
I won't go too much into this, but the 4S is brutally slow on iOS 9, which makes in contrast the 4 feel faster. That's why I can give Apple a pass here, because not only did they do what they could to fix the problem, it turns out that it indeed can get worse. So the iPhone 4s sullied iOS 7's reputation, which is kind of too bad to an extent because it actually ran pretty well on most of Apple's iPhones. This iPhone 4s that I have here is quite decent on iOS 7 and is actually kind of a pleasure to use, but you might notice something interesting interesting, the animations are slow, as in super slow. Before iOS 7.1, this is how Apple had it. When they sped things up, part of that was speeding up the entire interface, and this iPhone 4S is running a version before they did this. I'm actually glad of this, because while it makes less sense practically, it really gives a good sense of what Apple was trying to do. They were focused on a stylized approach, to a fault. They wanted everything to be smooth and seamless, but in reality, it just slowed people down. The vast majority of users don't care about how nice and pretty an animation looks, they just want to get into their app or their folder. Also, let's talk a little bit more about the design. One way it's different than what we see today is the fonts. Everything is very condensed and thin, as opposed to the more bold fonts we see on iOS 11. From the camera app to the clock on the lock screen, everything looks just a little bit different. I personally like it, and while I don't think Apple should have stuck with the look, it's kind of cool to see. Also, on older versions of iOS 7, the slide to power off looks completely different. I do prefer the one we have now, but this one is still really cool to see and I completely forgot it was ever a thing. iOS 7 does something really well that iOS 11 has fallen away from, and that's consistency across the platform. The App Store looks very similar to the iTunes Store, and the Music App, and the Settings, and iMessage, and so on and so forth. If you look at iOS 11, the inconsistency in design is everywhere. Just open up the App Store, and then the iTunes Store, and you'll see what I mean. A lot of work needs to be done here, but that's really a video for another time, so I'll leave it there for now. But again, to reaffirm, iOS 7 might not be your favorite design, but at least it keeps everything consistent and it makes sense in its own way. By far, the best thing iOS 7 introduced is the Control Center. It somewhat existed on iOS 6, but in a limited capacity. If you opened up the multitasker, you would have some basic audio controls, and that was pretty much it. It wasn't great, and this was completely fixed in iOS 7 with the Control control center that we more or less see today. Swipe up from the bottom and then not only do you have audio options but also a camera button, flashlight, calculator, Wi-Fi, do not disturb, Bluetooth, brightness, and so on and so forth. The multitasker is also much better than iOS 6 because it allows you to see previews of what you were doing before you close the app. It's very similar to what we have now, but a bit worse. Things have definitely been improved here. Support wise, you're going to find it tough to use iOS 7 in 2018, as nearly all apps now require iOS 9 or better. There are a few apps here in there like Clash of Clans, but for the most part you're going to be out of luck. However, there is a way to download old versions of apps. If you've downloaded the app before, a message will pop up asking if you want to download the latest compatible version. With this, you can use apps like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and so on. So there's that. Jailbreak-wise, iOS 7 is awesome, with a jailbreak for every iteration, and it can really add to the experience. For me, if I was to actually use this 4S, I would want to speed up the animations with Spring to Mize because, frankly, they're ridiculously slow. Over Overall, iOS 7 isn't that much different from what we see today. A lot of people see it as an end to an era, with the true Apple experience dying with iOS 6. I understand this viewpoint, but I also see it a different way. iOS 7 isn't just the end of an era, but the start of a new one. Apple might not seem as innovative and as special as they were five years ago, but that doesn't mean that they're a horrible company. iOS 7 represents so much more than just a redesign. Apple finally had the courage to step out of its shell and try something different. And no matter how you look at it, it's hard to say they didn't succeed. iOS 7 was truly something special, and if you like the old firmwares over it, I totally understand. In all truthfulness, so do I. But iOS 7 shouldn't be looked at as a failure, but rather as a stepping stone to get iPhones to where they are today. I've enjoyed using the software, and while it feels like it's lacking the heart and soul of former iterations, it is still truly unique and is a huge part of Apple history. History. Using iOS 7 in 2018 is a big throwback for me. This was the first version of iOS I used a lot when I got my iPhone 4 back in 2013, so I have some fond memories. My first video on this channel is me using the iPhone 4 and reviewing it on iOS 7. But it doesn't bring the same nostalgia to most people that iOS 6 does, and so iOS 7 is going to always be overlooked and ignored, which is too bad. iOS 7, 
was really neat, and still is. That said, it definitely isn't too usable in 2018. If I was to live on this, well, it wouldn't be that fun. Alright, I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I spent a lot of time on this video. I always do when it comes to these big reviews. So a like or even a subscription would be much appreciated. Comment your thoughts on iOS 7 down below. Was it better than iOS 6? Do you wish Apple had never changed the design? Also make sure you go check out Revac Tech. He has got some cool stuff. He's a promising small YouTuber. You should really go check him out. He's uh, He does some good stuff over there. Follow me on my Twitter and Instagram for interesting interesting tech tidbits. Uh, and with all that being said, and without further ado, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.